Our readings for today come from the Gospel of Luke, chapters 23 and 24. I'll start in verse 39 of chapter 23. You can find this on page 1060, 1061 in your purple Bibles. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Our second reading from Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. And when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. coming home and of all the angels of all the heavenly host we get to welcome him home yes. how good is that i know i never thought i'd say this but thank god for rotors <sighs> you can thank him yourself in a minute he's due any moment now the son of god is coming home oh, it's so exciting it makes me want to sing He's coming home, he's coming home, he's coming, Jesus is coming home. It's quite a nice tune, Nimbus. You know, I think you should send it into the anthems department. I think they might find a use for it in, I don't know, a couple of thousand years or so. I mean, just think, he was there at the start, at the very beginning. He was there before time, there before us. There at the very start. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hmm. You know, you're getting a feel for this, Nimbus. I'm going to write that down. That might be the start of something. <laughs> oh, Ooh, hold on. Ooh. I think someone's coming. <laughs> wow! Look at all of this! It's amazing! I can't believe it. And look at these clothes! They're brilliant! They're from a D 
different. I don't know where this is, but it's Christ. Oh, my goodness, Cumulus. Do you think that's him? Well, it's the right time and everything, but, I mean, it can't be, can it? I mean, I look at him. I mean, I know he had to give up his heavenly body and everything, but, I mean, really, I don't think I realise quite what a sacrifice he'd made until now. I know, I know. I, I'm, I'm not being funny, uh, but wasn't, didn't he go on a fast for 40 days a couple of years ago? <laughs> I mean, look at him. He doesn't look like someone who's gone short of a pie or two. <laughs> I mean, wow, look at it. You can see everything from here. Look, there's galaxies and planets over there. Look, there's even an alien. I know. It must be that I'm on a spaceship. But hold on, I don't know what a spaceship is. <laughs> what I do know is that a few minutes ago, I was on a cross, literally dying of thirst. And now I'm here, and I just feel happy. Happy and smiley inside. Nimbus, go and talk to him. Go and talk to him. Welcome him home. Go no, on. no way you go and talk to him. The rotor was in alphabetical order. All right. All right, come on. We'll go together. Come on, go together. Come on. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power, power and might, might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Uh, Nanu, Nanu, <laughs> I come in peace. Uh, 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 you and me, uh, huh? I'm not doing that, you know, like, complain now, I'll come in peace. Oh, my um, word, it must be because he's still in his human form, he must have amnesia, kind of forgot who he is. Oh, don't be stupid, he's not forgotten who he is, he's the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Don't you call me stupid, I'm not the one who let the team down. When? Quiz night. You forgot the Eighth Commandment. You said you'd never bring that up again. Oh, yes. uh, uh, excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt or anything. Uh, but could one of you uh, tell me where I am, please? Honestly, look around you. Can't you see? You're in heaven! Are you sure? <laughs> heaven? Yeah, heaven, you know. Opposite of hell. Home of God. Yahweh? Jehovah, creator of the universe, place of eternal peace and joy. Pretty good choir. <laughs> so, what he said, it was true then. Well, who said? The last thing I remember, I was having it out. My mate was cursing that other fella in the middle of us. The one everyone had been talking about, Jesus' his name. Oh. And I was telling Smiler the fellow who I did the robbery with, to lay off him, because he'd done nothing wrong. And I looked at him. I looked at him and I said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh, and he looked at me, he looked at me in a way that no one has ever looked at me. Deep into my soul he did. And he said, I tell you the truth, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. So you've met Jesus? Yes, I met him. I met him today on the cross. Oh, well, let... Well, tell me, what is your name? Lucius. Lucius Maximus Iratus. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lucius, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Cumulus. Hello. And this is Nimbus. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and allow us to welcome you to your new home. All right, lead the way then. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Thanks, guys. Uh, by the way, Cumulus. Yes, Lucius. The Eighth Commandment. Uh-huh. It's thou should not steal. Of course it is, Lucius. Of course it is. <laughs> Come on, let's show you around. <laughs> A 
Alan's going to come and talk to us in a moment. I wonder if he's doing it in a Brummie accent or not. Uh, if the children would like to come to the front to join us, that would be lovely. Okay, so as the children come up, we're going to pray. Shall I try? Oh, hello. So uh, let's pray as the children come up. Risen Jesus, give us such hearts and lives that demonstrate that you are alive and to be found amongst the living and amongst your people. Amen. So, what did you think of the sketch? Good, right answer. You can have some chocolate. What did, what did you... Oh, all right, in a minute. <laughs> what did we think of the sketch? Was it all right? Good, excellent. Now, were you listening carefully to what was being said? You were. Okay, so can anyone tell me the names of the three people in our sketch? Go on. Uh, Luce, Lucy? Lucius? Lucius. Excellent. Two more people. Can you remember what they were called? Can you remember? Cumulus. That's right. Excellent. Cumulus, Nimbus, and Lucius. Now, can anyone remember Lucius, the guy who came on? Can you remember what his response was to finding himself in heaven? What was his reaction like? He didn't know where he was. He didn't know where he was. Why do you think that was? Do you think he was a little bit confused? He was. Do you think he was a bit confused? Why do you think he was confused to find himself in heaven? Because heaven's different. Heaven's different. That's absolutely right. And I think he hadn't seen heaven before. And I also think He didn't think he was going to be in heaven. And you know why he didn't think he was going to be in heaven? Because he had done stuff wrong. And he was hanging on the cross with his friends because they were criminals. In our reading, Andrew said that his friend, Lucius' friend, Smiler, hurled insults at Jesus, said all kinds of bad things about him. And he said to Jesus, Why don't you save yourself and save us as well? But Lucius, Lucius rebuked his friend. Does anyone know what rebuked means? I think it means like insulted and like didn't back up. So that's right. His friend insulted Jesus and he rebuked his friend. He said to his friend, don't do that. Don't insult Jesus. And you know why he said that? He said, we've done stuff that's wrong, but Jesus hasn't. And so, you know what he did? He turned to Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And this is the amazing bit, the really, really amazing bit. Do you know what Jesus did on his very last interaction with someone else on earth? So the last thing that Jesus did when he was alive with another person. It was to bless him and to forgive him his sins. So Jesus turned to Lucius and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. He forgave him and he blessed his sins. So that's the first thing that I want to say today. Is that God is on our side. He forgave the sins of the criminal. And that's God's instinct. That's who God is. He said, today you'll be with me on paradise. But the story doesn't end there. Can anyone tell me who was missing from our sketch today? Who do we think was missing? Jesus. Correct. Jesus. The answer is Jesus. The answer is always Jesus. Um, why wasn't Jesus there? Now, How was it that Lucius was already in heaven? 
and the angels were waiting, but Jesus wasn't there. Why do you think? Because Jesus was burying the tomb ready to come alive again. Now that's absolutely right. So in our second reading that Andrew read to us, we heard about the women who went to the tomb expecting to find Jesus' body. Did they find it? What did they find instead? Sheets. That's right. Did you? A seashell. A seashell. Almost. Perhaps they found seashells as well. But what they actually found were linen strips. What they found that Jesus wasn't there. He had risen from the dead. And you know what the angels said who, who were with the women? They said, have you forgotten? Have you forgotten what Jesus said to you? And he reminded the women that Jesus had said after three days he would rise from the dead. So, our second point this morning is that God keeps his promises. So God blesses us. God keeps his promises. And that's why he raised Jesus from the dead. And lastly, I want to show you a picture this morning. Do you remember what Andrew read in his second reading about the women going to the tomb? What happened after that? Where did the women go? They went to tell the disciples, but only one of them believed. Fantastic. Can we see our picture? This is a picture by a Christian artist called Michael Cook. And Michael uh, has allowed us to uh, use a copy of his painting this morning. And it's a picture of what happens right at the end of our reading. Can anyone tell me, what do the women look like on there? The women. Describe what the women look like. Um, the women look like um, they're, um, they're sad. Uh, so the women are the ones at the top. <laughs> what do the women look like? What do we think? They look weird. They look weird? <laughs> That's one way of your future as an art critic away. So. They look old. They look old. So, it's close, <laughs> but it's not quite right, <laughs> in the words of the great Roy Walker. <laughs> uh, the words that I were looking for <laughs> were joyful. Joyful, a bit on the mature side, maybe. But they look, look, they look happy. Look at the woman in red and orange with her hair. Look at her body language. Her body language is open. She is joyful. She's got good news. She's saying Jesus is alive. Now, can you see the 11 disciples in that picture? Can you see the 11 men in that picture? What do you think they look like? They look like... Um they look like they're, they look like they're, they're shushing the woman to go up front because they're like going to slay. So there's that man in the middle who's shushing her, saying, shh. She's saying, he's alive. And he's saying, shh. What else do they look like? A bit ill. A bit ill? Dead. They, they look like they're asleep. Sad. And sad. So, you've got those who know that Jesus is alive. They're living in the day. There's a blue sky behind them. They are joyous. They are living out the message of the risen Christ. And in front of them, in the dark, those who don't know, confused, cold, one covering his mouth, one hiding, one not listening. The disciples look afraid, cower together, saying, shush, don't say anything. People might find us. But what the women know is that there is no need to be afraid. What the women know is that there is no need to fear. 
Because the women have the good news. And the good news is, Alleluia, he is risen. Does anyone know what the most repeated instruction is in the Bible? The command that said, in the whole Bible, more than any other. It's do not be afraid. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. And we do not fear because we know whatever life throws at us, whatever bad choices like Lucius we might make, whatever things happen that perhaps aren't our choice, Jesus says, do not fear because I am with you. Jesus says, I have overcome death itself. And those women are saying, he is not there. He is risen. Now, I just want to, for a minute, talk about something that happened earlier today. Earlier today, in a place called Sri Lanka, six bombs went off. Three in churches and three in hotels. Over 100 people have died today on Easter Day. The joy of today has been turned into mourning for some. But on this day, this day of all days, we know that death no longer has the final word. We know that the light shines in the darkness. And however hard it tries, the darkness cannot overcome it. The darkness cannot extinguish it. So today, we remember that God is on our side. We remember that God keeps his promises. And we remember that there is no reason to fear, no reason to be afraid. And that is why we call today the greatest day in history. It's why we shout, Jesus is alive. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia.